Welcome back. In the previous steps, we deployed a couple of sample REST APIs and we learned a lot about Elastic Beanstalk. Starting this step, let's focus on web applications. So the next two steps, we would want to focus on deploying a couple of web applications. In this step, let's focus on deploying a web application which uses a in-memory database. What I'll do is I'll close 02, which was the earlier project which we used. So I'm closing that out. If you have a running application, make sure that you terminate that as well and open up the 03 Spring Boot Web Application H2 project. Once you open this up, you would see all the stuff which are typically present in a web application, right? You would, this is kind of a traditional web application which is based on JSPs. We would want to deploy a var file. This application uses JPA Hibernate. It uses Spring Security to uh, provide security. Let's do a quick code review of this application. The important changes that you need to do whenever you'd want to move from a jar to a var. So you have an application which is be being deployed as a jar with Spring Boot. Let's say you'd want to make it a var and you'd want to deploy it into Tomcat. What are the changes you need to make? The important ones are packaging. So the first change you need to make is you need to make the packaging as var. So you would not package as a jar anymore. You'd want to package it as a var. So that's number one. The number two change that you need to make is to make the starter Tomcat provided. So what we would want to do is by default, Spring Boot Web Starter brings in starter Tomcat. So it would embed Tomcat as part of your var. And what we are doing is we are providing a scope of provided. When we do a scope of provided, the embedded Tomcat would be excluded from the var. So that's change number two. The change number three that you need to do is in your Spring Boot application class. So if you go to Java resources, source main Java, and go to your Spring Boot first web application class, this is basically the Spring Boot application class for this application. This launches the entire application. What we did is we made it extend Spring Boot servlet initializer. If you look at Spring Boot servlet initializer, whenever you would want to run a traditional Spring Boot web application, as a var, you need to extend this specific class and you can provide an implementation for the configure method. And that's exactly what we are doing in here. So we are overriding, we are extending this and providing an implementation for the configure method and saying this is the source file for this application. So those are the three changes that we would need to make to make sure that our application is no longer a jar, but it would be deployable as a var as well, as a web archive as well. If you want to create a var file on your own, your own web application, what you can do is go to start.spring.io, choose Maven project, Java, use one of the released versions, do not use snapshots, provide a group ID, artifact ID, and in the options, you can choose packaging as var. So that's the most important thing, choose a packaging of as var, and then you'd be able to create a web application using start.spring.io. Let's get back to the application in hand. Just like the REST API, this also uses JPA to do repository. We are using Spring Data JPA, JPA repository in here as well. The to do controller talks to the to do repository and provides all the features that are needed in a specific to do application. Adding a to do, deleting a to do, updating a to do, and all that fun stuff. We also have a welcome page, which is shown by the welcome controller. And we have a logout controller, which handles the logout features. The application is secured by using Spring Security. And you can see that the user ID and password are configured in here. So we would be using in 28 minutes as the user ID and dummy as the password. OK, enough boring stuff. Let's actually get to running this application and seeing it in action. I'll go ahead and do right click, run as Java application. Cool. The application started up fine. One of the interesting things for this is this is a web application. We are going to deploy it as a var file. So we have configured it to continue using port 8080. So there is no server.port configured in here. That means this application runs on 8080. 
because this application would be deployed onto Tomcat on Elastic Bean stack. The port which we configure in here is not really important. So we did not configure the port 5000, which is typically used. If you type in the localhost 8080 login, you'd be shown the Spring Security login page. The user ID and password is in 28 minutes and dummy. The UMMY, you can see the user ID and password configured in the Spring Security configuration as well. So it's in 28 minutes and this is the password dummy. No op over here signifies that this password is not encrypted and it is put in as is. Not very good, but it's okay for a sample application. Sign in, in 28 minutes dummy sign in and now you can go here and manage your to-dos. So you can see that we have three to-dos present in here. You can update, delete and play around with them. I can also log into H2 console. You just need to type in localhost 8080, H2 console. Make sure that you're using port 8080, localhost 8080, H2 console. And make sure that you are using the JDBC URL as JDBC colon H2 colon mem colon testdb. This is important because sometimes the default JDBC URL shown here would be something different. So once you do this, click connect. And now you'd be able to see the data. So you'd see that now there are three to-dos. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's delete this and see what. So you have you would see that row is deleted in here as well. And I can do an update. Let's say let's Angular JS 7 or it's no longer Angular JS, it's Angular 7. So let's change that. Uh, and probably you'd want to add a to-do as well learn AWS and say add and it says at least 10 characters learn AWS nav and let's see what's happening in the H2 console cool you can see learn AWS now in here you can see that the to do is updated as well so the web application is working as expected you can log out log in and all that fun stuff our task in the next few steps is to take this application and deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In the previous step, we were able to run the web application in our local. In this step, we would want to deploy this to Elastic Beanstalk. How can I deploy this to Elastic Beanstalk? What do, we, what do I need? I would need the var file. How do I create a var file for this? Yep, you know how to do that. Let's get started with that in this specific step. So let's terminate the application which is running. We don't really need it. And now I'll do a right click, run as Maven build, the one with three dots. And package, we would want to create the entire package where var contains all the jars, right? So var uh, and click run. This would start the build. It would be the traditional Maven build life cycle right so compile test and all that fun stuff so this is running the test right now this might take a couple of minutes cool all tests are successful it's building the wire file and it's deploying the actually creating the main artifact you can see that there is a file created with this name so 03 spring boot web application h2 0.0.1 snapshot.var so this is where it's created target and 03 spring wood web application h2 0.0.1 snapshot.var now i would want to deploy this to elastic beanstalk how do i do that let's get back to our elastic beanstalk ui and over here we have one application right now right rest api in 28 minutes what we'll do is because this would be a new application i would say create new application and I'll call this web application in 28 minutes. I'll say create. So this would create a new application where we would want to cre start creating our dev environment. So in the dev environment, let's say I would want to use the in-memory database to test the whole thing, right? That's what the application does. It uses an in-memory database. And the environment tier we would want is still a web application. So we would go with web server environment. The next thing which we would want to do is we would want to go with uh, uh, auto-generated domain is fine. Uh, I'll configure the name. As usual, we'll follow the standard of 
the application name hyphen dev. Um, we will use a pre-configured platform. The interesting choice over here is the fact that if we go with Java, we can only deploy a jar file. What we have now is a var file and to deploy a var file, you'd need a Tomcat. So this would provide a Java with Tomcat and we would want to pro deploy a new version. So we don't have an existing version of that var file loaded anywhere. So we would want to upload our code. So let's choose the right one. So make sure that you are going to 03 target and choosing the var file and say upload. The upload might take a little while because it's quite a big upload. Cool. The upload is done. It took about 15 seconds for me. And now I can go ahead and create an environment. As you know, creating an environment would take a little while. So if you'd want to go grab a coffee and come back, do that. I'll see you in the next step where we would start testing this application and seeing if everything's working fine. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. I hope you had a nice coffee and you are back with all your energy. And in the previous step, we started with deploying our web application. We started creating an environment for our web application. Within a few minutes, the entire thing was successful. You can see a health of OK, and you can see that the configuration is now Tomcat 8.5 with Java 8. So we are using Tomcat to run our web application because we created a var, we would want to run it as a web application in Tomcat. There's also a URL assigned to this application. I can go ahead and launch it. Control click that. And now you can see that it's actually, uh, the web application is showing me a login page. You know the user ID and password, it's in 28 minutes, dummy, D-U-M-M-Y, and sign in. Cool, now I'm able to see my to-dos. Cool, I see the to-dos as well. Uh, let's see if the H2 console works as expected. So I'll take this URL slash H2 hyphen console. When I type in the H2 console URL, the URL of the server slash H2 hyphen console, I see this error. Sorry, remote connections are disabled on this server. What we'll do now is we'll fix this error and we'll deploy a new version. The way you can do that is by enabling spring.h2.console and typing in web allow others. Be careful about the case and the hyphens and the dots. And I should actually have a settings in here. So it's spring.h2.console.settings web hyphen allow hyphen others. And I would need to set this value to true. So by default, it's not allowing web access for others. Now I would want to deploy this application to Elastic Beanstalk. How can I do that? Yep, you are right. The first thing I need to do is to build the var file. So I'll say run as maven build package. You can see that building a package and deploying it is a tricky thing. And uploading new versions gets a little tricky as we go on, right? As you make changes, you have to create the var, you have to deploy it and all that stuff. At a later point in time, you will see a solution for that. For now, let's do it manually. For now, let's focus on building the var file. So we have the updated var file ready. So let's now deploy this. How can I deploy a new version? Upload and deploy. And I can choose the file from here. So I'll choose the var file, the recently created var file. Make sure that it's recently created. And I would give it a version label of in 28 minutes, web application in 28 minutes. And I will say this is connected to H2 database. So later we would actually have a version which would be connecting to a MySQL database. So for now, let's call this H2 hyphen one. So web application in 28 minutes, H2 hyphen one, and say deploy. So this would deploy the recently created version. The great thing about deploying a new version is that deploying a version is typically quicker than creating an environment. So this should not take more than a couple of minutes. Let's wait for it to complete. You'd see that Elastic Beanstalk is updating the environment and the new version is being deployed. 
now the environment update is completed successfully and let's see if now we have access to h2 console now we are able to access the h2 console one of the important thing is to change this url this url should not be jdbc h2 test the url should be jdbc h2 mem test db so jdbc colon h2 colon mem colon test db this is a default which is used by spring boot and that's the database that you would want to connect to so connect cool now you would be able to see the to do table run it and you'd be able to see all the data in here that's cool now i would go here and delete oops i have to sign in again because we have redeployed the application in 28 minutes dummy sign in again Oh, I don't want to save the user ID password. Go to to-dos. And now over here, you can see that that to-do has been deleted. And if I actually do a run right now, you can see that there are only two to-dos. You can try updating, the de updating a to-do, adding a to-do, and you would see that everything is working fine. In this quick step, what we did was we took the web application, which we tested on our local, and we deployed it as a var file into Tomcat, which is deployed on an EC2 instance on Amazon Web Services using Elastic Beanstalk. We had to create a new application. We created a new environment for this called dev and we deployed the H2 version in there. I hope you are having an interesting time in this course. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this quick step, Let's look at the logs which are generated for the web application that we have deployed. Earlier, we deployed a jar file and the jar file runs as a Java application. However, the var file runs as a web application and it runs in Tomcat. So the log structure is a little different. Let's look at what is the difference very quickly. So let's do a request logs and I'll do full logs. So I'm requesting the full logs for the environment which we just created, web application in 28 minutes dev and I'll download it. What I'll do is I'll unzip the download and copy it into a logs folder inside our application. I'm copying the log file into our folder and I'll go ahead and right click and refresh the specific thing. You can also do a F5 and I can see all the log files in here. When you look at the logs, you'd see that there is a folder called health, health D. This is the health daemon which runs and keeps checking the status of the EC2 instances. This is same as what was there when we had the jar files. But these two folders are new, HTTPD and Tomcat 8. The default reverse proxy which is used along with a typical Java jar application, what did we see? It was ng-inx. So we were using nginx. However, the default reverse proxy when we are using a var file is HTTP server. It's Apache HTTP server and the logs for it, you'd be able to see it in HTTPD. So you'd be able to see the entire access log. So we uh, sent a few web requests earlier. So you can see that all the web pages we accessed, uh, you can see that there are CSS files, JavaScript files, web jars, H2 console access and all that stuff which is being printed in here. That's the HTTPD. The logs from the Apache HTTP server, which acts as a reverse proxy. And Tomcat 8 is the web server, right? So that's where the application is deployed. And that's where the logs of the running application, the Spring Boot application goes to. So you'll be able to see a Catalina out. That's where the entire logs of the Spring Boot application are present. So you can see the complete logs in here. You can also see a few queries getting fired down here as well. The other logs are typical to any Tomcat 8 deployment. Most of the other logs remain the same as we saw earlier. So there is no change in those things when it comes to a jar file versus a var file. The idea behind this step was to quickly show you the differences in the logs when it comes to jar versus var deployments. The important things for you to remember is the reverse proxy when it's a jar is Nginx. Whereas the reverse proxy when it comes to a var is Apache HTTP server. The other important thing that you need to remember is the fact that when we were deploying it as Java jar, the Spring Boot application logs were directly present inside the log folder. However, when we deploy it as a var in Tomcat, the Spring Boot logs are present as part of Catalina out, which is present inside the Tomcat 8 directory. 
I hope you are having a nice time. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye.